Good morning. It's Friday, October 13th, 2023. My name is Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Remembering My Friend, James Emmons, and our scripture is Psalm, chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. A goad is what a shepherd uses to direct his sheep towards the next good place for grazing and water. A life's path is determined by choices and the oversight of God. We choose to cooperate or kick against God's leading goad. For a preacher or anyone, that pathway's conversations between human and creator can be a daily struggle between understanding God's prodding and our own obstinance. The struggle to break from our bent to stubbornness is like Jacob's wrestling match with the angel of God who displaced the patriarch's hip, which caused him to limp for the rest of his life. Some choices carry more weight than others, a reminder of a better path not taken. I met James Emmons in 1999. I was on an unplanned sabbatical. That's the in-between churches that pastors sometimes experience. James's church was searching for a pastor, and I was available. God did the goading to lead me into friendship with a man who would be a godly influence in my life. The Brownworth and Emmons clans meshed with church life and friendship. We shared a mini vacation one time. We prayed together. We shared meals at each other's homes. James and I very nearly shared a birthday in 1947, only a few weeks apart. His was in May, mine in June. About 15 years ago, when we were both crossing the line from the sixth decade of life to the seventh, I called James on his birthday. When he answered, I sang, quite off-key, Happy birthday, dear James, you old coot! Happy birthday to you! From that moment, old coot became our greeting. James passed a few days ago after a long struggle with cancer. It wasn't until a few days before that passing I shared with him the backstory on why I began the old coot business. In 1983, I was serving a church in tiny McIntosh, Florida, population 257. The four churches in McIntosh shared Sunday evening services, and Mr. Richardson, one of the lifelong Methodist brothers, was in the hospital at the time. Mr. Richardson had just passed his 80th birthday when I walked into that hospital room. All the pastors of all the churches in town visited the members. Denominations were unimportant in that burg. We chatted, we prayed, and when I was about to leave, another elderly man ambled through the door. I didn't recognize E. Colin Lindsay, who in 1935 partnered with Henry Belk to create Florida's largest chain department stores, Belk Lindsay. Mr. Lindsay and Mr. Richardson were like James and I, born only a few weeks apart, with Mr. Richardson being the elder. They attended the McIntosh grade school together as children and remained friends for life, even though Richardson was a Methodist and Lindsay was a Presbyterian. As Lindsay walked through that hospital room door to visit his old friend, Mr. Richardson brightened up and howled, Colin, what on earth are you doing in a hospital? And Mr. Lindsay, limping on a cane, smiled an impish grin, and he said, I just wanted to see what an 85-year-old coot looked like. Now, that 40-year-old story is about friendship that's faithful and endures a lifetime. 
The reason I began to call my friend James an old coot is because even though we started later than Richardson and Lindsay, the Brownworth and Emmons bond did the same. For me, old coot symbolized the essence of a long and fruitful friendship. And that is what I will miss most about my friend and co-laborer in Christ. He had a playful, gentle spirit, but a fierce commitment and loyalty to Jesus. I know this faithful friend and Christian brother will greet me one day over yonder. For you today, I trust you have good long-term friendships. I pray you have eternal friendships. And I suspect James didn't often kick against God's goading towards his will. I trusted James's counsel, his friendship, and I knew he had my back always. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.